Hi, everybody. I'm Willie, and I'm here in Willie's Guitars, and it's after hours. Everybody's gone. So, I've got some stuff to show you. Um, you know, a lot of times people with Fender guitars want to take guitars apart. It, it seems when I was growing up, you didn't take guitars apart constantly. And it seems to be this growing concern that everybody has to take every little bit of guitar apart. Now, we got this guitar in, I'll share with you. And this guitar, upon first glance, just looks like kind of a nothing guitar. So it really was behooven on us to take it apart. And you can see there, at the end of that neck, it is a 1963. It's a December 63 neck. Now. Um, I'll remind you that necks at Fender were made by the hundreds. So somebody over on that side of the building was making necks, and then they would ship them on carts. They would push like a hundred necks on carts across to the other room to be applied onto bodies, and they were making bodies, and they would go into another room and get painted, and so nothing. There is no born on date with Fender guitars. There is a neck stamp at the end and everybody generally considers that the date it was born. However, this being December of 63 could well have had pots that were well into 64. Um, this 63 neck has pearl dots. This 63 neck has been just butchered and we're going to be selling it for cheap. But Here's the point of this. If you screw in neck screws and these go in and out, in and out through these holes, eventually the screws will just fall out. They no longer do their job of holding the guitar together. And it's just bad health to keep taking a guitar apart. Now, what's your point, Willie? Well, I'll tell you. I'm going to use this as an example. I just got this in and unfortunately it's sold already. I know. This is a 1960 Jazzmaster in the original white. So this guitar comes to us, it's got original strings, it's got original hang tags. And you can see that Jazzmaster hang tag on there. This hang tag is actually the instructions. It tells you how to adjust the bridge. It tells you string height adjustment, string length adjustment, the fender floating bridge. And the big breakthrough on the Jazzmaster was one of the things was the fact that the tremolo locked in place. You didn't have to use it. It could uh, stay in tune better that way. You also had a preset tone control. All of you probably know that that are watching this, but um, this will go into the cases. Uh, they use flat wound strings. Did you know that all these guitars back then were shipped with 12 gauge flat wound strings? Yeah, that was standard in pre CBS days. 12 gauge flat wound strings. This guitar also has this hang tag, the original wrench, and it has the original serial number on this hang tag. Now these were generally added at the dealer. It, this is an interesting hang tag that you don't often see. General Plastics is a division of General Tire. Made the covering for this, and look how clean this case is with the clean leather ends. This covering went from tweed to brown about this time period. And that is called, of course, as you all know, Tolex. So you get this tag in here that the general tire people wanted you to know the durable fabric supported vinyl for lasting beauty, tear and scuff resistant, resists stains, alcohol, good thing, perspiration, acids, oil, and water, easily cleaned with mild soap and warm water. The Tolex people, there's letters from the original owner, there's the original strap, there's the original cord. You look at the guitar and you can see it has gentle play wear. A guitar like this, sit down. A guitar like this does not need to be taken apart. Do you really need to know whether it's a early 61 or a late 61, early 62? Is it matter that much? Because like I said, the end of the neck might have a date on it. That's not its date. That's the date that they made the neck in that part of the factory. 
and it took them a couple of weeks to send it to that part of the factory, and then that part of the factory made guitars over month-long periods of time. I've seen necks and body dates that are almost a year apart that are factory original. My point, try not to take all these poor things apart. Um, this guitar, it has a nice flame maple neck, has original Cluson tuners. You can see from all the hang tags, you can see that it has original bridge cover. You can just smell this is a completely straight guitar. If you have a guitar like this, if you're selling it, bring it to us. Let us help you. Don't let somebody take a screwdriver to your poor guitar and take the neck on and off. And then the next guy puts it, takes the neck on and off. And then the next guy takes the neck on and off. You wouldn't do that to a new Fender, would you? Why would you do it to a precious collectible? Don't take these apart. Don't make me mad. So, it's my little video for right now. A, yes, this is a magnificent guitar. I'd like to say too, the Jazzmaster, as you know, I've been reading a lot of books on Fender lately. There's a great book by Freddie White, who was the um, vice president of Fender. This added on a rhythm position, so these volume and tones were just for this pickup. You could preset that, and you could put it back down, and you got your regular controls here. That's what made the Jazzmaster really unique. Back in the day, guys were very interested in having rhythm and lead sounds. As a rhythm player, especially playing in a big band, you kind of laid back in the pocket. That was what the Jazzmaster was good for. The offset body was also fairly revolutionary. Offset is registered trademark of Fender. And um, the quality control back then, Forrest White would say, the quality control was everybody's issue. Everybody got a bonus if the quality control was always, always good. The type of wood they chose, Brazilian rosewood fretboards, it was all anybody would use. The type of wood they chose, how they wound the pickups, how it was all um, uh, soldered together, all of this was hugely important and it made Fender legendary. Fender was the stuff of high-end musicians, guys that made their living playing guitar, played Fenders. They were durable, they were easily to replace the neck. If something go wrong, you could replace these parts. And that's why finding one of these utility instruments, things that were meant to be played, uh, especially Fender, in such good condition is quite rare. A guitar like this will be worth much more than a guitar that's been played and scratched. Much more. Why? Because it represents the maker's art. This is from an era gone by. This is an era when Fender made revolutionary guitars and super high quality guitars. This type of thing changed America. It changed the world. All these people playing rock and roll changed the world. I'm sorry, but it's true. So this is Willie saying goodbye for now. And I can appreciate y'all wanting to take off necks and check the dates and stuff, but you don't need to do it on items that are just unquestionably uh, original. We sold this guitar and we told the buyer we refuse to take off the neck. They got over it, they wrote the check, and that's how it's gonna be. And again, if something is really worn out, you really need to know, we'd be happy to take it apart carefully for you. Don't be willy-nilly about selling your precious fenders and taking apart every last little thing. Okay? <laughs>